morning and welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from Hebrews the 8th chapter verse 3 through 6. The Bible says, For every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices, thus it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. Now if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. They serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things. For when Moses was about to erect the tent, he was instructed by God, saying, See that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain. But as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. We've been working through the book of Hebrews. I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous episodes where we've introduced each of these sections. Today we're working on the section, the fourth section, that describes that Christ's sacrifice is better than the sacrifice of the old covenant. In the last episode, we introduced the thesis, which explains what he's going to be uh, uh, telling us. Now we begin the section of proofs here in chapter 8, verse 3, where he will work through several proofs to to demonstrate how that it, it is that Christ's sacrifice is better than the sacrifice of animals that was offered by the Levitical priesthood. First phrase, for every high priest is appointed to offer gifts and sacrifices, thus it is necessary for this priest also to have something to offer. So he harkens back to how the old covenant was with the Levitical priest. When they came to the tabernacle, they always brought something. If you're interested in studying this in great detail, go back to the book of Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, and you'll see all the various sacrifices. There were sacrifices they offered daily, some with birds, for example. There were grain sacrifices. There were offerings they made with various oils or um, incense that they prepared. There were lots of different kinds of animal sacrifices, uh, various types of personal sins that people would commit. They would come and the priests would offer various sacrifices for them. And then, of course, there was the yearly sacrifice where the priest came and offered an, a scapegoat and a lamb uh, once for the sins of the people each year. And the point uh, the author of Hebrews is making is that the priest always had to bring something. He could not come empty-handed. He had to bring something. And so if Christ is going to be a priest, though it is after the order of Melchizedek, it's also necessary that he have something to offer. And when you think about what Christ offered, the next phrase says, Now if he were on earth, he would not be a priest at all, since there are priests who offer gifts according to the law. It sounds as if people were saying, why did Christ have to leave? Why did he have to go to heaven? Since he's a priest, wouldn't it be better if he were here on earth? Maybe he could offer sacrifices in our temple here in Jerusalem. You have to remember who's receiving this letter and what, what their mindset was. The author is explaining that if he were on earth, he would have to abide by the laws of the old covenant regarding priests. Those laws had already been given, and there they were. But he says that's not the kind of priest he is. He's a priest that has to offer his sacrifice in heaven. So think about the, the contrast the author is giving us. On the one hand, you have these priests who by the law go into the tabernacle and the temple and offer sacrifices daily, offer sacrifices yearly, and it never stops. It is a continuous stream of the blood of animals offered over and over and over again. And of course, he has explained already that in so doing, the old covenant demonstrates to us that they really didn't forgive anything. On the other hand, now you have Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father as the prologue explained to us perpetually offering his blood his hands this man Jesus Christ our man on the inside as he sits at the right hand of the father his hands are pierced and the blood is there his side is pierced and the blood is there where the crown of thorns was shoved upon his head that head that hung on the cross is there at the right hand of the father perpetually offering the blood of the son of God on behalf of sin now go a step further in eternity, when we all dwell in the new heavens and the new earth, Christ will continue to sit at the right hand of the Father throughout all of eternity. The man, Jesus, the Messiah, the Christ, at the right hand of the Father, eternally offering his blood. That's what he brings. When we are ages and eons into eternity, enjoying the, 
the delights of the new heaven and the new earth dwelling in the presence of God the only thing that will give us right to that place is the fact that at the right hand of the father sits the man Jesus the Christ with blood on his hands paying the debt for us that's what's being demonstrated here Christ must be in the heavenly not on this earth then he says those sacrifices that were offered though do serve a purpose they serve a copy and shadow of the heavenly things we demonstrated in the last episode this idea of a shadow how the eternal light of God's glory shines back down the stream of time most fully illuminating the cross of Jesus and all the events surrounding his death his resurrection the blood that was offered that is what's most fully illuminated but as with any light a shadow is cast from that and that shadow is the old covenant now he specifically describes to us that the priest and the offerings that the priest gave were shadows of the heavenly or real things the real thing that was intended all along wasn't animals being offered in a stone building in the Middle East it wasn't a tent being erected in the desert with a goat being ran off into the wilderness the real thing that was intended all along the heavenly thing was the son of God bleeding on our behalf so he says for when Moses was about to erect the tent he was instructed by God saying see that you make everything according to the pattern that was shown you on the mountain he tells us that there was an indication in the old covenant that those things were going to be shadows and that indication is this quote from Exodus 25 verse 40 where Moses was told to make everything according to the pattern. In other words, God told Moses, you make everything by the blueprint I gave that I give you. Make it exactly like I give it to you. Don't deviate any at all. Somebody might say, well, wait a minute. Don't we have a lot of flexibility in how we worship God and how we approach God? No, we don't. Moses was told to follow the pattern exactly and the reason is because there were things intended by those commandments given to Moses that Moses could not possibly know because those things were shadows of a real thing to come friend when you wonder just how much leeway we have in obeying God ask yourself this question the things that God has instructed us to do in the New Testament are some of these things shadows of the heavenly things to come in our new heavens and new earth shouldn't we follow the pattern given us because they may be indications of greater things to come never doubt the blueprint that God has given then finally he concludes by saying but as it is Christ has obtained a ministry that is as much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises the old covenant the law given at Mount Sinai was a covenant of promise but the promise had to do with those children entering the promised land and escaping slavery Exodus 3 7 through 8 sort of summarizes it where God said he had come down to deliver them out of the Egypt from the Egyptians and give them this land and throughout the old covenant it was said that if you keep these things you shall live the whole idea of the law given at Sinai was that this law was a law that if they followed it would give them a good life here on this earth on the other hand a promise was made to Abraham long before the law at Sinai and the promise made to Abraham continued to be reiterated through the years it was reiterated again in Jeremiah 31 31 through 33 where God said through the voice of Jeremiah that he's going to make a new covenant a new promise not like the one given at Sinai but a different kind that's what makes the covenant of Christ better that it's based on better promises and this is going to be the thrust of our text coming up in the next three or four episodes how it is that the promises of Christ are better than the promises that were given at Sinai and indeed the promises of Christ are the promises that were offered to Abraham Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. I hope as you have begun today in the Word of God, you will live out today in the Word of God.